It is one of the oldest mysteries of mankind. But now, researchers have finally succeeded in shedding much more light on the mysterious Stonehenge darkness. Because a newly discovered mass grave near the mythical stone circle actually harbors a completely new suspicion about its true purpose. But that's not all. In the same breath, detailed analyses have revealed the origin of the so-called altar stone and shown that it comes from a completely different part of the world than the other megaliths. We have conquered diseases that once meant certain death, we have decoded the genome, and we are sending space probes to other planets. Yet, despite all this, we are not able to explain an ancient stone circle. Okay, admittedly, this casual formulation probably doesn't do justice to the profound mystery surrounding Stonehenge, and yet it gets pretty close to the heart of the matter. Located near Amesbury in the English county of Wiltshire, Stonehenge is none other than one of the most mysterious testimonies of the world. How did people manage to move so many heavy stone blocks from A to B an estimated 5,000 years ago, and then erect them and pile some of them on top of each other? The question of the site's original purpose seems no less confusing, even though the pendulum of experts has long since swung in a certain direction. After all, as early as the beginning of the 20th century, British astronomer Joseph Norman Lockyer had already determined that the so-called heel stone of the formation is aligned with the sunrise at the summer solstice. The theory that Stonehenge represents a kind of Stone Age calendar is therefore considered extremely likely by researchers. And yet, we do not know how exactly and according to which system the stone block supported time measurement took place. In order to finally change this, British archaeologist Timothy Darville from Bournemouth University compared the latest findings and discoveries in the area around Stonehenge with other ancient calendar systems a few years ago, and in doing so, brought some astonishing circumstances to light. First and foremost, the fact that Stonehenge was probably much more precise as a solar calendar than previously thought. And the research results suggest that the complex was based on a tropical solar year of 365.25 days. In this context, the 30 sarsen, the sandstone blocks weighing several tons that were used to build Stonehenge, stood in a circular formation, each representing one day within a month. This month was in turn divided into three weeks of 10 days each, with particularly prominent stones marking the beginning of a new week. After 12 rotations, a year would be complete. But since 12 times 30 only adds up to 360 and not 365.25 days, the five trilliths, the famous gate structures made of two supporting stones and a capstone, were erected, which served as additional intercalary days on the one hand and as a dedication to the gods on the other. At the same time, the 10-day week of the Stonehenge calendar could also provide us with further information about its mysterious background. Such systems were actually used by other cultures at the time, such as in the Eastern Mediterranean or in ancient Egypt. In this context, the knowledge on which the system was based must have traveled a long way, but more remarkably, the experts have now discovered that another part of the monument has also traveled an astonishing distance. How did this extremely heavy stone get from Scotland to southern England? It has been known for some time that the material used in Stonehenge did not come from just one quarry around the corner. While the large sarsens were still of local origin, the approximately 80 blue stones were brought from Wales, 250 kilometers away. Why and above all how this was done has not been conclusively explained just like the question of how the builders of Stonehenge transported a six-ton sandstone over a distance of more than 750 kilometers to make it the centerpiece of their structure. While the five-meter long and approximately one-meter wide altar stone lies toppled over in the center of the site, researchers suspect that it was erected at the same time as the trillis during the second construction phase between 4,620 and 4,480 years ago. Whether the altar stone really once stood upright cannot be said with absolute certainty, but what is beyond question is the fact that, from a purely geological point of view, it enjoys an exceptional position among the megaliths of Stonehenge. Adorned with greenish speckles, this block has a very different composition from the others, 
But despite all this, experts long held to the idea that the altar stone also has its roots in Wales. But as we now know, this is simply not the case. After the team, led by Anthony Clark of Curtin University in Australia, subjected the stone to a detailed mineralogical and isotopic analysis, it was clear that it did not come from the previously suspected area. At the center of the investigation were tiny grains of the minerals zircon, rutile, and apatite, whose isotopic composition and age can provide crucial clues about the origin and age of the sandstone. And the bottom line is that the analysis showed that some of the mineral grains in the stone are between 1 and 2 billion years old and are definitely not of local origin. Combined with the mineral composition, this great age suggests that the oldest parts of the sandstone were formed in the Precambrian, which means that we are talking about a time when dinosaurs didn't even exist yet. Furthermore, the sandstone did not just form just anywhere, but on the territory of the supercontinent Laurasia, the remains of which form Scotland today. And with this knowledge in mind, it is probably not surprising that the composition of the stone fits neither the geology around Stonehenge nor the rock formations in Wales, but it fits a region in northeastern Scotland all the better. No wonder, since this area is the only one in the whole of Great Britain that contains this particular combination of minerals, but how on earth did people manage to bring the altar stone to southern England so many thousands of years ago? Again, we are dealing here with a six-ton block that has traveled more than 750 kilometers. Incidentally, this also makes the altar stone a record holder. We know of no other stone in a monument of this era that was transported such a great distance. Exactly how the stone was brought to its intended location, however, is a historical mystery, and transporting it overland was, to put it mildly, a challenging undertaking. Even if the people had used pack animals, they would have to overcome many obstacles in the landscape, such as rivers, swamps, mountains, and dense forests. More than a few experts consider such an undertaking with the means of the time to be practically impossible, and they consider it more likely that the altar stone came to England by sea route instead. In detail, it was first shipped by sea along the east coast of Great Britain, and then via the Thames, and other rivers to the vicinity of Stonehenge. After all, we should not forget that, according to recent studies, the megalithic culture of the Stonehenge builders probably goes back to Stone Age seafarers who spread along the eastern seacoast. And so it happens that a simple stone not only reveals new background information about an ancient structure, but also provides valuable insights into the wide-ranging connections of the culture of its creators. The origin of the altar stone suggests that extensive long-distance trade networks were already established at that time, and that society was probably much more complexly organized than previously thought for this Stone Age chapter of Britain. This mass grave sheds new light on Stonehenge. From an archaeological point of view, the unexpected often happens. What began as routine construction work in the city of Salisbury ultimately brought to light an enormous burial site consisting of several circular burial mounds, which was probably built between 2400 and 1500 BC. In other words, we are talking about the same era in which the central parts of Stonehenge were built, and only about 15 kilometers away. According to the experts, the fact that we overlooked the ancient graves for so long is because they were originally filled up with soil and later leveled by agriculture. Inside the barrows, the experts identified the remains of ten deceased and traces of ash from three cremations, well, at least up to now. Since the researchers have so far only been able to examine five of the twenty graves, the number of mortal remains is likely to increase even further in the future. All in all, this find once again testifies to the important cultural and spiritual significance that Stonehenge had thousands of years ago. After all, the world-famous Stone Circle is likely to have just been the centerpiece of a full-blown ritual landscape. Several astronomically aligned ditches and ramparts have already been discovered near the monument, and the nearby prehistoric settlement of Durgan Wells was also equipped with a colossal stone row, a superhenge of ritual pits and a two-kilometer-long woodhenge. 
And if we go back to the barrows at this point, one of them is particularly unusual. In the center of this barrow is the grave of a child who was buried with a vessel of the so-called Yorkshire type. And as the name suggests, this type of ceramic was actually more common in Northern England. So this artifact may also testify to the great distances traveled by the people of the time. And for some experts, the discovery of the burial mounds suggests that Stonehenge itself was once used as a burial place. And you are welcome to use the subscribe button as a clickable spot. We'd love for you to join our community so you never miss a new video from us again. See you soon!